Hi to all the Preta template users. Here's another tutorial. This time we're going to recreate this beautiful dress from Egg Apporter. And I am currently choosing a template from the bodies woman section. I'm going to use this exaggerated proportion template because I think it will allow me to show the proportion and this beautiful skirt, the volume of the dress in the best way so i'm going to keep only the middle view reduce the opacity of a template using this toggle the icon you find it in the top right corner and now i am just switching the tool to pencil and the size to the smallest tap on the palettes tool go to skin colors and find uh, a skin color that's darker than what I want it to be so that I can see it pretty well and start um, finding the skin and the features of the face kind of like a sketch nothing much to worry about just um, just an outline I can always um, I can always draw on top of it and fix things on the go so um, usually I start with finding an outline of the oval of the face and position of the eyes mouth and nose as a foundation for my drawing If you want to move some parts of the face, some features without erasing them, the good way to do it is use scissors tool, then tap on the empty layer and then move it and erase the contents of the original layer. That way you will have um, the features appear on the new layer. So I'm doing it the same way for the mouth and the eyes in order to move them a little bit up. Moving along to the hands and only the parts that are going to be visible, the parts of the body. And leaving it kind of like a sketch, which is all right for now. I just want the idea of the outline. I will not repeat the same pose as on the reference pic, but I will follow the template. And it, there's a bit of a glare on the screen, but I'm just outlining exactly the hand as it is on the template. And the first uh, sketch or like idea of the shape of the dress, I'm going to still work on the same layer because I know I will have a lot of layers in the end. So whatever I can keep together I will as long as it doesn't um, shouldn't be like altered in the future so this is pretty safe choice I'm going to add the outline to this sketch layer of mine just to find the shape of the dress and I did change a color to this darker purple color all I will do is find the proportions, find the general shape of the dress.
For coloring, I've added one more layer underneath the drawing so that the drawing always stays on top and I can see it. And I'm going to use a flat marker and one of these skin tones from the standard skin colors palette. First of all, I'm just going to try and fill it in flat with the same color. And the marker has this tendency to kind of overlap transparently different layers. But if I want to avoid that, I just try to fill it in within, uh, without picking the eye pencil of the screen. That way it will not overlap. But I know that even if it will, it only I can take advantage of that. It will only add more shadow. So I try to go and overlap over the areas which I know should be darker. And it kind of even saves me time because I don't have to switch the color. Just working with the same tool and using this toggle to actually make it darker and start adding shadows. Now on this picture, the light is from the right. However, I'm going to follow my own um, idea of light. I will make it come from the left side. So everything from the right is going to have a shadow. And that is what I'm going to add right now. And if I feel it's a bit too harsh, the difference between light and shadow, and I want to soften it, I'm going to take a color that is in between, kind of middle tone, and just swipe it across the entire face using a watercolor brush, which I'm picking up right now, and just like go over. So it, it works sort of like a blending tool. I'm also adding some highlights now in the areas where I think the light should be and that's from the left side in the same way as I did the shadows, kind of like the same technique. And adding more shadows again with a darker color. I like to work slow and gradual, just um, one thing at a time. If I have time and I want to do a highly detailed illustration, I will use as many steps as necessary without trying to um, break it down into just one, two steps kind of to achieve the result. So I'm just building up the um, drawing and looking at what, what can be added or removed. So I'm going to slowly add a bit more shadows right now and see if that's going to be enough, which I think it will. I will start working on the hair. For the hair, I will pick this dark color and again, I'll take advantage of the marker tool, which will give me this saturation of darkness. So the first time I just go over this area, it's kind of a light color. It's not really black because it's kind of transparent. But then I will go over this color again. And the second layer will give me more depth. So right away I'm thinking where it should be darker and where it should be lighter to leave the light and shadow areas. I want to focus more dark colors on like next to the face and around the neck to sort of make it stand out a bit more. And usually that area is the one that has more shadow. And the light will focus on top of the head and slightly to the left.
And this is how I'm going to leave it uh, right now and add one more layer to start coloring the dress because I don't want to finish completely the face and skin. I want to kind of build up on the entire illustration slowly all over. So I'm taking this color from the standard palette. And by the way, most of the times when I use um, the colors from standard palette, they're enough to make almost any illustration. I hardly have an need to search for like extra things, extra colors. They cover almost all my needs in coloring. So they're really handy and I know where what colors are. I kind of know them by heart. So it's really saving me a lot of time. So what I'm doing is using flat marker and I'm making sure I don't overwork too much on all the areas because if you look at the reference picture you see that a lot of areas are really transparent. So you have to give a really light touch to some parts to give the illusion of transparency of the material and some parts you can really saturate that color to show that there's a lot of, of folds. And the color is lighter than what it is on the dress because the idea that I want to make is start from the lighter colors and then add darker on top. It's okay to do the other way around. It's uh, pretty much whatever you're comfortable with. For me, I decided to go from light to dark so I'm building up on the entire um, dress volume this way. And I'm changing slightly to darker color for the skirt because it seems like there's just so much more material that it gives more depth to the color. It, it, there's not much transparency. So that's why I'm taking a darker color for skirt altogether. As I'm filling in the space, I'm making sure that on the sides of the skirt, I'm leaving some parts that are going to be just a few light transparent touches to deliver the um, material properties to show the transparency. Because if I keep a strong edge all the way to the side, it's not going to look transparent anymore. Next step, I'm going to start building some volume um, to add this overlapping transparent layers on top of the top part of the dress. Again, marker, I think, is the only and the best tool for this. And it's just going to be very quick and efficient to deliver this look. And I will be just carefully adding these layers. Thinking about a light and dark as well, the volume of the top. So I'm going to make the sides a bit darker. And add these elements. Time to add more uh, of the darker color. As you can see on a reference, there's pretty dark, almost black parts. I think I'm going to have to use maybe two or three different values of this color in order to really show the volume of the piece because now it looks pretty flat. So this is my second step. I'm adding the parts with more shadow. On the skirt, the main focus will be some of these lines that are folding and the edge of each of the skirts, like levels of the skirt, right? So there's going to be a shadow and 
there will be more darker part right under the edge because the skirt go one skirt goes under the other and it's like it's submerged in shadow so in order to convey that effect I'm going to saturate some darker color right under the edge and then allow it to become lighter uh, on the part where it comes out again and that will help me to create the illusion of these skirts one on top of the other There's already a substantial amount of volume on the skirt, but if I'm going to add even darker places, it's going to look even better. So I'm adding one more layer and I need a color that's almost black, but I feel this will not make it dark enough, but I don't want to take black as well. So what I will do is use a color picker tool and extract that really dark color right from the skirt of the reference picture. Now I can really see the contrast and be really uh, selective and careful how I'm going to use it. I don't want too much of it. Just these areas under each of the skirt and some of the folds, even fewer than the previous time. Now that I feel that the skirt is almost finished and the dress looks good, I'm going to go back to the face and try to bring it to the same level of detail. And that would probably wrap up the illustration. So adding one more layer on top, I want to be drawing on top of even the sketch that I made that time because I'm going to use darker colors and I don't want them to be hidden under this skin tone sketch color that I used for the first time. So I'm fixing here the edges of the hair. You can see how the black color now goes over those brown sketch because I'm using the layer right on top and I'm going to add some shadows for the hair. To make the hair shiny, it's really important to think of it as something like a ribbon. So there's gonna be an area of shad shadow that will slowly um, go into the lighter color light until it finishes the highlight, the peak, and then slowly transition into the shadow again. So I'm just going to build up shadow right now and then I will add the highlight. I'm using this white color for the highlight and I will make a really narrow 
point where it will reach the peak and become really white because I'm using a pencil I can go slow without overdoing it and I'm making sure with this hatching kind of uh, moves that it transition is really soft so I like blend it in the area of the darkness like this so really making a narrow line that's almost wide and then blending it inside the adjacent areas is going to give you this beautiful effect of a highlight Drawing the eyes using black pencil, I am just finding its shape and the eyebrow with a brown pencil, some contour of eyelids, darkening some areas. I think if you use a pencil in a very small size, it's a beautiful way to build on a very realistic face drawing because pencil gives that softness that looks like um, something organic every time I'm drawing skin hair eyes and picking the tool with soft edge it's always going to look much more alive than picking something that looks like a really hard edged um, edges of color so pencil it's actually allows to have this realism that's why i use it so much if i want a realistic drawing Finishing and drawing carefully all the other features and fixing the drawing because I feel that there's, there, there's a bit of a problem with the nose and the chin which I will kind of redraw because it's kind of skewed to the side and it's a bit too long so I will fix it now, make it shorter and take it into the shadow and also find the edge of the nose and fix the sides too. I have a feeling that if I added a bit of this pink from the dress somewhere on the face, it would look um, great because I see on a reference picture this color, you can see it in the lips and in the eyes. So I will introduce just a bit of it over here, which I think will help to tie it with the dress and the lighter version of that color for the lips too. Last thing I want to add is a pop of color, so I'm going to use this bright pink and mostly, um, mostly add it to the center of the skirt, which will help it to bring, bring it like forward and make it look more round and give it even more volume. So I will just use just a few touches of it around the skirt. Adding some darker lines on this transparent area is going to also add realism to the folds. So that's what I'm going to do. Find a way to hold your pencil and you can test it on the side of the screen where the marker becomes narrow and not wide and do these lines. And here's a final illustration. I really hope you liked it. 
please give this video a like and subscribe to this channel to see more.